AkronHipHop.com, the reporter newspaper online.com. Check it out. When you see this brother in the building, Kofi, Doc Ock is here and he's back with part two of his uh, excursion all over the galaxies. He was all over the galaxies, right? Tell somebody where he was at again one more time. Recap. Germany, Switzerland, the Netherlands, went through Belgium and France. And you was in search of some black facts. Tell somebody what black facts are to you. Black facts. Black Facts Educational Research Incorporated is an organization devoted to the um, researching our history, local and global, and then disseminating that and put, putting that information into a format for young people particularly, but also for the older people as well. Well, listen, man, like we did last time in the same fashion, I got my brother Cat Israel in the building. What up, Cat? Hey. Hey, man, so we're going to just continue like we did last time, part two. Part two. Take it away, Cat. Uh, let's do it. Um, I don't know, last time we covered Germany and uh, the Black Madonnas and the theism, correct? Correct. And the who? The what? You said the Black Goddesses and the Theas? Uh, the Black uh, black goddesses, uh, black Gods and Saints. Saints, that's what it was. Black okay. Gods and Saints. So I know we covered Germany so far. Um, can, you tell you, can you tell us about some experiences in other countries? Other countries, okay. Well, as a matter of fact, I brought a few uh, artifacts with me today. And um, one of the um, images that I see a lot, excuse me. Oh, I got it. Okay. One of the images I see a lot on um, the internet is the image of this brother right here. And he just looks like a kind of a regular brother. I mean, but, if, you know, his clothes are, are kind of different. Uh, because they put him in period clothes from the Netherlands, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And so when I went to the Netherlands, that was the, the place I went to after I left um, after I left Germany. I, uh, I stayed with a friend of mine, and uh, we toured the place uh, where where she lives at. She lives in a place called Zandam, which is right next to Amsterdam and Rotterdam. So when you're in the Netherlands, there's a lot of dimes. Keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah, to keep that in mind, there's a lot of dimes, right? And so, so we were in Zandam, and we were touring around, and then we also went to go see the place where the windmills are at. So we actually did that. We toured Can around. Can you explain the windmills for us? Well, I don't know as a lot as, as as much about them as I would like to know. We did do the uh, the tour on the water of these windmills. I'm not sure exactly what they do. I'm a, I'm figuring that they usually windmills are used for energy. Oh, okay. And they put them on beside rivers. Um, well, no, they, they don't have to necessarily be behind, beside a river, but they have to be somewhere where it's windy. Okay, so they do need a lot of wind. And then what they will do is they will grind your grain for you. So this was uh you know how people got were able to do things before the advent of electricity is they would use these windmills. Oh, okay. So we went there, and it's really like a tourist place. So we had heard about this place. I'd heard about it just the day before. We were at the Monet Museum. Monet is a European artist, and apparently he did a series of paintings where he was on the water and painting these windmills. So he was in a boat while he was doing his painting, uh -huh. like a rowboat, and not, not even a really big boat. So, um, so we went, we went there, and I was expecting to see the windmills, and we were going to see some other tourist type stuff, you know, just regular stuff. I was having to take a day off, but we actually ended up running into a chocolate factory. Oh wow! So when we got off the subway, off the train, and you step out in the open air, the first thing you notice is that there's a smell of chocolate in the air. Oh, that's nice. And so we're walking along beside the factory. We're smelling all the chocolate. And then we come to this little small shop right next to a, the first windmill I saw there up close. And it was a, um, we went inside. It was called Smells Like Chocolate. Okay, a apparently he was dealing with the fact that he's right below <coughs> this factory. And it was an ongoing chocolate seller, chocolate dealer. So it's a, uh, an African 
selling chocolate in the Netherlands. Now that I was I did not expect. And so we got to talk to a chance to meet him, talk with him. Turned out my friend is from Suriname, and she actually had experience picking these, this chocolate. Oh wow! So they have chocolate the, uh, fields in, in the area. They have well, no, they have. You grow cacao. Oh okay. And so you turn cacao into cocoa. You turn cacao into chocolate. Oh, okay. Based on how that works. So, so she got excited, you know, when she realized what he had in there, and we got to see the seeds. They're the big seed pods like this. I mean, they're really huge, etc. And um, and just you know, learn something about this because I I can never get cacao, cocoa, and chocolate. I can never figure them out. Are they the same thing? Because cacao is smell spelled a lot like cocoa, but the letters are kind of mixed up. It sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, but really they are basically. They're, they, they're, they're derived from the same plant. So okay. cacao, cocoa, it's basically the same thing. So we were there, and then, uh, so that's what we did the, the second day that I was in the Netherlands. We did that, and I had this unexpected experience. But when I got back to, um, to her place that evening, I thought about where could I go for the last day I was gonna be there, and I was only gonna be there for a few hours, because I had to catch a, um, my next, uh, transportation out of the Netherlands over to France. And so I said, well, you know, I, I, I believe there's a, a, a piece of artwork that is at one of these museums in Amsterdam, which is just up the road. I couldn't remember what it was called or who the artist was, but I thought I could remember enough to find it on the internet. I found it on the internet. Turns out it was in a museum that she was going to take, wanted to take me to anyway. So no, no. on the way out of there, we went to the museum and I was able, because I had looked it up on the internet and had specifics about it, I was able to talk to the ticket take, not the ticket taker, but the person at the information desk. And they were able to take us directly to the picture. And this is the picture I'm talking about here, right? Oh, cool. Picture of this brother over here. And I was shocked because all this time I've been, this picture right here on the cover of this book, this is about how big the whole picture is. The picture ain't much bigger than oh, this. Oh, wow. I didn't see that coming. Right. I thought the picture was like, you know, a big wall size thing, you know, really large. But when I actually got there to see the picture, I was shocked to see how small it was and then to realize how much work it took for them, for him to get all that detail into this picture where you could blow it up bigger than that and really see a lot of detail in it. Okay, well, well, can you tell the, uh, the people out there in Blackburn uh, your contact information and where they can find you and everything? You can and always find me at www.blackfacts, that's B-L-A-K-F-A-C-T-S dot org. That's where to reach me. And just, just leave a message and go to my inbox. Okay. Hey, man, listen, man. I appreciate you. I think we got to do a part three, don't you think? I think so. All right, man, for AkronHipHop.com, Black Facts, we out of here. Peace.